was the Southwest disaster and all through the country, people waited in airports after spending their money. They waited and waited and hoped to arrive at their destination without a surprise. But alas, when the announcement came out, they were riddled with terror. This was the nightmare of Christmas and there had been a major error. All the flights had been grounded. No one shall pass. Fingers were pointed. It was the fault of the brass. On Southwest, on Delta, on United, on Spirit. F your travel plans. You'll sleep in this airport. Sorry, I really couldn't resist doing just a little holiday rhyme to describe what a disaster this actually was. You've got to find fun in Southwest canceling thousands upon thousands of flights to keep from crying, especially if you were one of the poor souls who were doomed to wander the halls of an airport four states away from home. From Christmas to just after New Year's, the airline was in complete disarray. People who came in to see their parents, families, or friends, or just go on a well-deserved Christmas vacation were instead met with mass confusion and disappointment. Everywhere you looked, you were surrounded by bags of those who had been left behind. People were waiting for their flights, spending thousands on hotels, or were trapped sleeping at the airport. Trying to get on a Southwest plane was like attempting to win the lottery, virtually impossible. And even if you were lucky enough to get on that plane, that didn't actually mean you were going anywhere. Oh no, they were just playing a fun game with your emotions. One flight in Texas after being delayed for seven long hours was finally able to board. The tired passengers rejoiced and slinked onto the plane exhausted, but ready to finally take off. They got all warm and comfy and all closed in together only to be met with an announcement. I'm sorry to say this, but I'm over hours. And yep, that's the pilot speaking. So yet again, they made their way to the ticket counter to be met with hours of lines with no explanation and no end in sight. For those who were lucky enough to arrive at their destination, they were met with yet another lovely surprise. Their bags were also nowhere to be found. They could be in another state, another airport, or just in a massive black hole designated specifically for Southwest bags. No one knew where they were. As the news started to appear everywhere you looked, it just kept getting worse. Meanwhile, all other airlines were business as usual, doing their jobs and flying people to their destinations. So what the fuck happened with Southwest during the holidays? And what was the true cause of their holiday meltdown? Hello, and welcome to The Corporate Casket. I'm the Illuminati, and today we're going to be talking about the holiday meltdown of Southwest Airlines and the factors that contributed to such a horrifyingly disappointing holiday for hundreds of thousands of their customers. The holiday season of 2022 in the world of Southwest Airlines was a week of chaos. Everyone knows the holidays can be exhausting and unpredictable if you choose to be one of the brave people that fly. This holiday season, however, it took the cake and led to a massive disruption that we've never really seen before. It all started just a couple of days before Christmas when a massive winter cyclone hit the Upper East Coast of the United States. For many, this meant they wouldn't get to travel for a few days, but don't worry, said the airlines, they could probably still get you where you needed to go by Christmas at the very least, no reason to panic. And for most airlines, this was absolutely correct, but for Southwest Airlines, it wasn't. Right when everyone else seemed to get their schedules back to working condition, only canceling about 2% of their flights after the bomb cyclone had passed, Southwest seemed to take about 5 million steps backwards. On Monday, December 26th, there had been about 2,950 flights canceled with an astonishing 2,549 of them being Southwest. At first, this was described as the aftermath of a historic winter storm, but the panicked passengers would eventually learn the chaos was brought upon them because of something else entirely. But we'll get to that in just a moment. As flights were canceled left and right, thousands and thousands of people reached for their phones, praying that they could change their arrangements. However, they would be met with a whole new type of headache because instead of reaching customer service, they were met with dial tones that lasted hours. No worries though, we live in a technologically advanced society. There are websites and apps to assist you. Small problem, according to the weary and deeply frustrated passengers, those didn't work either. But okay, one more last ditch effort. People can just go to the airport and speak to customer service agents in person. Again, there was a problem. Not at all surprisingly, when thousands of flights get canceled at the same time, the phones are bombarded with calls and the app shut down, this causes the lines at the airport to become increasingly massive. And when I say massive, I mean massive. Some reported line wait times as long as eight hours. 
This isn't Disneyland with people waiting to get on the newest ride. This is a Southwest line. Then to top all of this off, if people were able to wait through the line without passing out from hunger or leaving out of frustration, they were met with some more deeply upsetting news. They were trapped and likely unable to get on a plane for days. This was the ultimate breakdown. And with a massive failure as big as this one, people did what people do best, ran to the internet to relentlessly make fun of the company that couldn't do their only job. Of course, TikTok practically exploded with people saying things like, you know that trip you've been planning for six plus months over the holidays? Yeah, you're gonna have to cancel that. To which another person responded by saying, but on the bright side, we told you about five minutes before you were supposed to board your plane. And oh, how the mighty have fallen. Just before this holiday season, Southwest was the fun airline. They had funny customer service people. Their social media engagement was off the charts and they gave vouchers and points to people who sang their praises online. Now they were the laughing stock and had done so poorly that their flight attendants and customer service workers were in tears after dealing with thousands of angry customers. As the chaos continued, many customers waited for something that might make them feel just a tiny bit better, though it would never make up for the time they lost with their family. And that is of course, refunds. For many, the meltdown meant they had to rent a car, stay in a hotel, or buy some food they hadn't budgeted for. They wanted their money back and rightfully so. At first, this didn't seem like an option as Southwest claimed their meltdown was due to weather. However, their tune would soon change after more news came to light. In the beginning, Southwest CEO released a statement saying, we had a tough day today. In all likelihood, we'll have another tough day tomorrow. And oh boy, was he right. He was apologetic, but almost nonchalant about the whole ordeal. And soon his world would come crumbling down because as people began to dig a little deeper into the story, the company's tails just went further between their legs. It wasn't the weather that was their problem. It was their incompetence. And by all accounts, it seems like they'll have to pay for it. In the beginning, the explanation for the massive failure was simple. There was a storm. Maybe that would have been believable, but there was one massive hole in their reasoning because as the storm passed, all of the other airlines were relatively back to normal. And that includes Spirit, which you really gotta fuck up if even Spirit Airlines is doing better than you. So there was something else clearly going on and the company's worst kept secret was about to become public. You see, all airlines are required by federal law to give their customers full refunds for cancellations that are under their control, not vouchers like Southwest was trying to do. Airlines have a nasty little habit of not bringing this up to their customers and offering flight credit that no one will ever use. Southwest was just adding to that tradition, but this time it was in the public eye. Oh, and the company had also publicly committed to covering hotel stays if they were responsible for the cancellations. It's something that they didn't, at least not at first, seem super inclined to make this time around. I mean, according to them, it was the weather and this was completely out of their control. But after their mass cancellations, their inability to communicate with their customers and their seeming attempt to skirt refund requirements, they were met with the big guns, a federal investigation. At least it was the threat of a federal investigation. After one of the biggest days of mass cancellations, the company was met with a statement from the US Department of Transportation threatening an investigation after calling the onslaught of delays and cancellations disproportionate and unacceptable. As the statement continued, the federal entity announced it would quote, examine whether cancellations were controllable and if Southwest is complying with its customer service plan. Suddenly their tune changed. Okay, they suddenly could give in a little. Maybe, just maybe it wasn't all due to weather. Maybe it was just a little bit their fault too, but just just a little bit. As the Department of Transportation and Pete Buttigieg began to pressure the airline, they released new statements. And this time it sounded a little bit different. It turns out the massive meltdown may have had something to do with their ancient operating system. Something that employees had been warning them to update for quite a while. But again, we'll get into that in just a moment. According to the CEO, Robert Jordan, their operating system works 99% of the time, but this time the storm was just too much for it to recover from. You see, Southwest doesn't work like other airlines. They don't actually have a main hub that they fly in and out of. So their operations are actually quite complex. If one flight gets canceled, it creates a snowball effect for all of the flights after it because people are relying on that flight's plane and the crew to show up. They also rely on a scheduling tool to figure out where all of their employees are. And unfortunately, that scheduling tool for Southwest is absolutely terrible. And as flights change at a rapid pace, they quite literally lost their employees. And when you don't have employees, it means you're not flying. So it was kind of a human error issue. And sure, 
the weather messed up their path, but if they had an operational system that actually worked, they would have been able to bounce back. You know, like every other airline. But as massive companies do, they tried to spin the narrative. Only it didn't work out. And now they have quite a few rules that they're going to have to follow. On December 29th, 2022, the DOT published a letter that had been sent to Southwest regarding all of the expectations they would have to meet to relatively make up for their massive mistake. First things first, stranded customers needed to make it to their destination. It seems simple enough, but Southwest has been having trouble with this. So it's good that we have it in writing. Beyond that, they're now required to refund their passengers, not only for their travel tickets, but for their meals, hotels, and any ground transportation they had to resort to. With everything that happened, this seems like the very least they could do. Recently, they sent out an email to all passengers who flew any time during the historic meltdown, granting them some travel points as a gesture of goodwill, along with yet another apology. Even if they grovel and keep giving out points, that might not completely save them. Because when you ruin thousands of people's chances at a holiday or to see loved ones or to just get home, that comes with quite the backlash. And I feel like Southwest is just starting their apology tour. Of course, it might not even save them from some lawsuits that are already starting to stream in. By December 30th, a class action lawsuit was already being proposed by a passenger that said the company had failed to provide refunds to people who had been stranded. For this, the person was looking for damages to be paid. Though Southwest didn't directly respond to the news of the lawsuit, they did release a statement that said, several high priority efforts are underway to do right by our customers, including processing refunds from canceled flights and reimbursing customers for expenses incurred as a result of the irregular operations. Maybe it's possible that the airline could win back its customers, but they're not the only ones they need to apologize to because it wasn't just passengers who were put through the ringer on their Christmas meltdown. It was their employees and it wasn't the first time. As the airline basically imploded, customers and employees alike were in for a rough couple days. As happens with virtually every company ever, the blame for the massive nightmare was placed primarily on the people who were doing their best to help, the employees. Airline agents were literally in tears and they were trying to do everything in their power to fix the mistakes of the people who, you know, actually run the company. And these employees were facing the brunt of the backlash with no help or apologies from their superiors. Like the customers, the employees weren't just going to sit back and let the company completely screw them over without speaking out. On December 26th, the Southwest Union decided to release a statement to bring to light just how awful the company's meltdown was. As they were still attempting to blame the weather, the statement shined a light on the real issue, their systems. They claimed that the COO, Andrew Watterson, had admitted to their systems being overmatched by Storm Elliott. Finally, the truth comes out. Thousands of them had been stranded all over the United States. Some of them were sleeping on cots in the airports nowhere close to their home with no idea when they would be moved. Others were in hotels without any power or water. Part of the letter read, "'Trying to get home for Christmas "'seems like a dream to flight attendants "'who are struggling with the nightmare "'of trying to secure appropriate shelter, food, and rest.'" Undoubtedly, the airline had monumentally messed up with their employees, and instead of rushing to make things right, a memo was leaked that showed that they were more interested in putting them under more pressure. Released December 21st, just a few days before their mass cancellations, Chris Johnson declared a state of operational emergency due to an unusually high number of absences at their Denver location. Because of this, there were quite a few new rules the employees would have to adhere to. First things first, they couldn't call out sick. That is, unless they had a doctor's note. But let's not forget that visiting doctors costs money and of course time. And in case you're thinking, hey, that's not too much of a problem, telehealth is easy and everywhere, they could get a doctor's note quickly and easy, but small problem that wasn't an option and could not be used as an excuse. If people missed work without a note, they were facing termination. Personal absences were also shut down and oh yeah, there was now mandatory overtime. If people refused to work the mandatory overtime the week of Christmas, again, they were up for termination. And isn't that just the most wonderful memo to receive during a massive company failure? Now, all of this gets so much worse when you learn that Southwest employees had been begging the company to update the systems for years. Yeah, the employees could feel that this was going to happen and they did speak out, but the higher ups decided to ignore that. In 2021, the Union of Southwest Airlines flight attendants released a letter they had sent to the company. In it, they broke down quite a few requests and demands they had for the company. In part, it read, 
a career as a flight attendant has become physically exhausting, mentally challenging, even threatening, as we have been assaulted and attacked at a rate of incidents that has increased 2000%. Operational mishaps and technological shortcomings occur often, far too often. Flight attendants are often stranded alongside Southwest customers without information. And huh, look at that. About a year before the massive issues plagued the company on one of the busiest travel weeks of the year, employees were already bringing up the fact that they had been stranded. Then there was their lack of COVID protections, pay cuts, and job loss threats too. Meanwhile, Southwest was having a banner year and was named one of Forbes' top employers. Isn't that just a bit ironic? And by the end of the letter, they listed some demands with the top three all related to the archaic operation system. Their asks were ultimately quite simple. They wanted the company to prioritize their safety, modernize the antiquated reserve system, and quote, improved communication tools for use between crew scheduling and flight attendants to alleviate the need to contact schedule, which would help alleviate with long scheduling hold times. So the company had plenty of warning of what was going to come. Their scheduling and operating systems were hanging on by a thread, but they decided to push on. Even after jokes started circulating that their operating system was so bad and so outdated that it looked like it was designed on Microsoft 95, they still continued on with it. And not at all shockingly, money had a lot to do with it. While the airline was catapulted to success in the early 2000s, it leaned on barely taking care of its employees and cutting operating corners to keep itself afloat. As people continued to make recommendations, they continuously pointed to metrics and costs to avoid making any changes. As one captain said, we could see that the wheels were about ready to fall off the bus, but no one in leadership would heed our pleas. Its lack of commitment to both its employees and customers spearheaded by the massive meltdown that we just bore witness to. It's a tale as old as time. As time goes on, we'll have to see if this nightmare brings any change for Southwest in the future. Will they update their system? Or will they simply cross their fingers and hope that this never happens again? As dumb as that idea sounds, I wouldn't necessarily put it past them. They seem pretty fond of skirting the rule, at least based on my opinion, an opinion I've developed after finding various instances where they decided following the rules just wasn't their thing. A new year is full of new possibilities, but when your e-commerce business is dealing with gift returns, late deliveries, and a mountain of customer emails, you can feel a bit stuck but ShipStation helps you get there faster, whether you run a side hustle or a giant warehouse. Keep customers happy and fulfill more orders than ever, all while cutting shipping costs and managing it from a single dashboard. And their best rates in the industry just got even better with up to 86% off USPS and UPS rates. It's not a question of if you should switch to ShipStation, but why you haven't already. Because let's be honest for a moment, Shipping is probably one of the most tedious tasks when it comes to running an online business. And finding a platform that makes the solution an all-in-one, easy to handle situation is the best kind of situation. So why not make 2023 an even easier year? ShipStation makes it easy to grow your business by handling your orders from every platform in one place. It integrates effortlessly everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce businesses with ShipStation, and 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. So make the new year your best year and grow your business with ShipStation. Use promo code CASKET today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. Again, that's ShipStation.com, promo code CASKET. This historic failure wasn't actually the first time Southwest has faced some meltdowns or some issues with the government. In 2009, their insistence on cutting corners was brought into full view of the country. It turns out they seem to really like completely avoiding doing safety checks. In fact, they avoided them so much that they flew 46 airplanes and astonishingly and terrifyingly, 59,791 times without performing their federally mandated inspections for fuselage cracks. Almost 60,000 flights took place across the country without any type of mandatory inspection. And I don't know about you, but for me, that is a terrifying statistic. But let's make it a little bit scarier. Do you wanna guess how many people were on those planes? A little over 140,000. I just love to hear that an airline put over 100,000 people's lives at risk. Just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, doesn't it? 
Now, thankfully, after whistleblowers had allegedly been silenced for an outrageous amount of time, the FAA finally decided to step in and ground planes in 2008 so they could complete an investigation. They eventually sued Southwest and later the government entity and the massive airline reached a settlement for an astonishing $7.5 million. This was the second biggest settlement ever reached between the FAA and an airline. Of course, if they decided not to follow 13 new safety steps, including increasing the number of on-site technical representatives and providing more access to the FAA, then they would have to pay an additional $7.5 million. And at the time, it seemed like they had taken all the right steps. Every plane should be safe and they were on the right track. Unfortunately, just a few years later, a tragedy would prove that that wasn't the case. In 2008, on a Southwest plane, the engine exploded mid-flight, hurling debris 32,000 feet in the air. In a moment of horror, the debris caused a window to become a hole, causing a decompression in the cabin. One passenger, Jennifer Riordan, was sucked partially out as another passenger rushed to her aid in an attempt to save her. Even though pilots were able to make a skillful emergency landing in Philadelphia, she did succumb to her injuries and died. In the beginning, it was discovered that the engine showed metal fatigue. As the investigation continued into the next year, they would eventually find that part of a metal fan in the engine had come off and destroyed it. The situation could have been much worse if it weren't for the bravery and composure of the flight attendants who did their best to keep everyone safe. After the plane landed, they were walking down the aisles helping passengers. All the more reason for Southwest to actually listen to their employees' needs, right? The company avoided any type of repercussions for the incident, though new safety measures were introduced to make sure that this never happens again. Theoretically, they should have been checking every time more carefully before this event ever took place, but it wasn't 100% their fault. It was chalked up to more of a freak accident. However, increased safety measures can only go so far when you're cozying up to the very organization that was supposed to be enforcing them. In 2022, it was discovered that this was exactly what had been going on between the FAA and Southwest. You see, between 2018 and 2020, according to a whistleblower, there had been interference in part of FAA senior leadership. After multiple people came out saying that the FAA had been slacking on its duties, the agency finally admitted that it had been cutting some corners when monitoring Southwest. And that's not great considering their history. Allegedly, Southwest's top officials and a senior FAA official in Washington had become quite close, sharing weekly texts, emails, and calls. Obviously, this is pretty concerning to hear and brought up questions about whether or not inspectors were allowed to properly conduct their work. This was something that became even more plausible when news broke that an FAA regulator literally had to apologize to the airline after being too, quote, heavy handed. Soon, a report came out that made the situation even worse. Apparently, this incredibly cozy relationship had led to the FAA to completely disregard their checks, allowing Southwest to all but ignore the safety standards for tens of thousands of flights, putting roughly 17 million passengers' lives at risk. The FAA claimed that the company had used diversion, distraction, and power to avoid visits from local officials. In turn, planes that operated nearly 150,000 flights had undocumented, non-conforming, or unverifiable repairs that no one, but especially the passengers, had any idea about. Additionally, the airline had been consistently giving incorrect aircraft weight and balance points to their pilots, which could cause an onslaught of disasters during takeoffs and landings. Then there was also the FAA's tendency to completely ignore the airline's consistent pattern of assigning their mechanics to more work than what was possible for them to complete. And when the work was inevitably not completed, the investigators would simply just sign off that the work had been done. As Southwest continued to have incidents, including one where a plane withstood damage to both of its wings and another where a pilot literally overran a fucking runway, the FAA just stood idly by. By all accounts, the government agency had been complicit in hiding every incident and avoided any investigation. So Southwest just kept going right on as if everything was right in the world. So yeah, cutting corners definitely seems to be their thing, at least in my opinion, and based on the terrifying amount of evidence available. Of course, they claim they are going to do their best to cut down on the ever-growing list of safety concerns, but if they remain all buddy-buddy with the FAA, I don't really have too much hope that that will be the case. I'm holding my breath because public airlines should be as safe as physically possible. And the last thing we need is a massive disaster caused by people simply not doing their jobs. 
Hopefully, as time goes forward, Southwest will figure out its plethora of issues. Hopefully we don't see yet another holiday meltdown and for the love of everything, I hope they fix their safety issues. Fortunately for now, it seems like we're all just going to have to hold our breath, but the Christmas nightmare has definitely brought up quite a few issues that might just scare me out of flying Southwest ever again in my life. We'll have to see and you know, keep your eyes and ears open, but for the time being, you will not find me on a Southwest flight any longer. Call me crazy, but at this point in time, I'd rather spend the extra 50, 100, or even $150 to fly with an airline that, you know, does their safety checks. So, you know, maybe I won't die while I'm in the air. Let me know your thoughts on the Southwest debacle and maybe you were one of the unfortunate people involved in it. Let me know your story. But thank you so much for joining me for today's episode. I really do appreciate it. And if you want more content from me, make sure to click the Linktree link in the description box. It'll have links to all of my social media and any projects that I'm involved in. Again, thank you for joining me for today's episode. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.